This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this lesson, we'll take a look at trackers. In motion, you apply a tracking behavior to an object to record and analyze its motion. The result of this analysis is a track. This track can be applied to any other object in the project, transferring the motion of a source object to a destination object. Tracking behaviors analyze an area of pixels known as a reference pattern over a range of frames in a movie clip. You specify the reference pattern to be tracked by dragging one or more on-screen trackers to the area of a clip you want to analyze. Motion then proceeds to track the designated reference pattern for a specified duration of time. This duration of time is based on the length of the tracking behavior, the length of the defined play range, or the length of the clip. Let's take a look. In motion, Create a new project. Choose Create Project from File. Navigate to the Working Files, Lesson 13, Four Corner. Let's say a producer came to us with a news story, maybe a jewelry store was robbed, and they said, this isn't an advertisement, let's take the number out of there. So what we need to do, first play back the project. We can see it's a little shaky, so we're going to want to motion track the project. There's a couple ways we can go about this. In this project, we're going to use the parameter tracker. The first thing we want to do is add a filter, blur, circle blur. And the reason we want to use circle blur, if we go to the inspector, we can see it has a center parameter. Any filter with a center parameter can have a motion tracker applied to it. Let's turn down the radius and move it into place. I'll turn up the amount. From the pop-up, choose Add Parameter Behavior, Track. By default, the tracker lands in the middle of the center point. Click and drag, and we can see in the tracker preview a zoomed-in version of our canvas. Ideally, the reference pattern should be a consistent, easily identifiable detail with high contrast. This makes the pattern easier to track. We'll move the crosshair right on top of where the black and white meet. From here, Turn the look ahead frames up to about 10. The reason being, a car drives by, so we want the tracker to look ahead to when that car has gone by. Click Analyze. If your tracker stopped like mine did, reposition the tracker to the original area and click Analyze. If the reference pattern is locked, Motion will stop the track and move you to the frame the reference pattern was lost. It allows you to create a new reference pattern and analyze from there. Let's play this back from the beginning. As we can see, our blur matches very tightly to the phone number. Stop playback and return to the beginning. We can adjust the filter and the motion track remains. So let's say we show this to the producer, and he actually wanted the address blurred out, not the phone number. That's easy to do because we already have our track in place. Under Filters, we'll turn down the amount, move our tracker over the address. Make the proper adjustments and play back the project. Because we still have the tracking data applied to the center point, and our behavior is set to mimic, it is mimicking the position of the tracker. However, if we choose Attach to Source, the blur will always remain with the tracker. In fact, if we choose the filter, when we try to adjust the center point, we can't. It is attached to the tracker. Another way we could have went about this, delete the behavior and return back to the center point. This time, add a parameter behavior, track, but instead of tracking the phone number, track a letter in the sign. Make sure you're at frame one and choose analyze. This time we don't have to worry about the car driving by. 
And since we're doing a very simple motion tracking behavior, we can now use this to mimic the source in the filter. So now we can move the center point, let's say over the eagle. And because we're mimicking the source, it doesn't matter if anything passes in front of it. As I mentioned earlier, you can add the tracking parameter to any filter with a center point. But sometimes you want to use a filter and track it, but it doesn't have a center point. So you got to be creative. Let's take a look. Close this project and start a new project. Create project from file and choose the first look. Center it in the canvas and watch it back. We could fix the shakiness, which we did in the first lesson, but this time we want to brighten the groom's face. It looks pretty good, but he should be glowing the first time he sees his bride. We could add a filter, such as levels, except levels does not have a center point. What we can do instead is add a shape. At about frame 41, draw a basic shape around his face. It doesn't have to be perfect. Go into Shape, Style, and turn off the outline, and make the fill white. From here, turn up the feather, and turn down the fall off just a bit. Move to the Properties, and change the Blending Mode to Overlay. Turn down the Opacity just a bit. About 37% works well. And we can see it's brightened up his face. We're now going to use a very simple tracker on the source clip called Analyze Motion. Attach the tracker to the corner of his mouth and set a play range. So Command Option I to set an endpoint and Command Option O about frame 93. Move back to the first frame and choose Analyze. If your motion tracker has stopped tracking, move the tracker back to the corner of his mouth and choose Analyze. Once we reach the end of the play range, motion stops tracking. Move back to frame 41 and choose our shape. From here, in the Behaviors pop-up, choose Motion Tracking, Match Move. By default, motion will use the layer underneath as the source. However, we already applied an Analyze Motion behavior to it. So from the drop down menu, choose Analyze Motion. Motion will now use that tracking data for our shape. From here, we're going to choose Mimic Source and move the tracker into place. We're only going to mimic the position. Actually, it turns out we need to center it just a bit. It's looking pretty good. The last thing we want to do, select your shape, and from the pop-up menu, choose Basic Motion, Fade In and Fade Out. We want the shape to fade out about this frame, and we also want the shape to also end at this frame. Let's play this back from the beginning by pressing Shift Spacebar. Now we can see for just a second, the groom is glowing as he first sees his bride. We can probably adjust that fade out so it doesn't fade out so fast. That looks pretty good. In the next lesson, we'll take a look at some advanced tracking options.